Welcome to our online presentation today, Latin Trails Galapagos Yacht Fleet for 2013 and a preview of all of the various itineraries that are available for you in the Galapagos as well as some for Ecuador. And here to kick off our presentation is Maria with Latin Trails. Welcome, Maria. Hello, Liz. Thank you for that nice presentation. Good morning, everyone. My name is Maria Salem, and I'm Marketing Coordinator at Latin Trails. I would like to first thank you for taking the time to join us to this webinar. The main purpose of this webinar is to present our Galapagos fleet and all the itineraries available for 2013. I would like to proudly present two people that are very important in my company. First, our CEO, Marcel Perkins, owner of Latin Trails and Galapagos expert. Also, a Javier Echeverria, our sales manager. At the end of the presentation, we will try to answer, answer all your questions and summarize the information. I know a lot of you are familiar with Galapagos, but I would like to talk a little about Latin Trails that is a South America tour and travel operator with 20 years of experience doing Galapagos tours and Amazon travel. It's, uh, traveling to the Galapagos is a wonderful experience, but this time we will offer you traveling to the Galapagos by Latin Trails. A little bit of Ecuador location. Western South America bordering the Pacific Ocean at the equator between Colombia and Peru. Why choosing Ecuador? That is the question everybody asks. Well, Ecuador is gentle, safe, healthy, splendid. So many words that can describe this place where you can reconnect with the earth and discover the nature rhythm of the world. Ecuador colonial capital provides cosmopolitan traveling that is hard to beat, excellent restaurants and hotels. It's surrounded by volcanic peaks that reach heights almost 21 feet high. What a scenery! That is why Ecuador is called the land of contrast, because it's a small-sized country with is blessed with coast regions, highlands, mountains, Amazon rainforests, becoming a paradise for travelers' lovers. There is where we come to offering you easy, affordable access to all Ecuador. When we talk about biodiversity, Ecuador is not only biodiverse, but now is considered a mega diverse country. This award makes us proud to present our country but also give us a big responsibility to protect and share with all the travelers what Ecuador has to offer. Here is a map of Ecuador and mainly that shows the good roads. In South America, after Chile, Ecuador has the best roads in South America that joins the whole country. You can travel among Ecuador in flights, in 30 minutes flights to the coast, to the jungle, and maximum one hour and a half to Galapagos. People, if you ask me why I like so much my country other than the natural wonders is the people. If you ask me why, it's because they appreciate life beyond anything and help travelers enjoy the country. I think is a People is one of the, is the heart of the country. About weather, Ecuador lies directly on the equator, so the entire country enjoys 12 hours of direct equatorial daylight, 365 days a year. However, the climate you will experience depends largely on where you are in Ecuador, since there are four distinct geographical areas, the Sierra, mountains, the Oriente, Eastern Rainforest, the Coast, Pacific Coastal Plains, and the Galapagos Island. 
But at the end of the day, what is more important in the Ecuador climate is that allow travelers to visit the country all year round. Here again, you can see how easily you can travel to the different areas of Ecuador. Places to visit first. Well, it's hard to choose one of the advantages of traveling to Ecuador. You have ethnic groups, you have culture, historical placer, places, hot spring water, rainforest, and also here you can see you will take all ways of transportation invented by men to, to travel all over the country. The main subject of our webinar, Amazing Wildlife of the Galapagos Islands. How to plan your trip to the Enchanted Island? That is very easy. The main tip that our sales executives told me here in the office is consider the budget and the itineraries. And that is one of the main characteristics Latin Trails has is that we have the best itineraries in the Galapagos Islands. When is the time best time, best time to visit Ecuador and the Galapagos? All year round. Fortunately, we don't have severe, severe climate variation, neither seasons. Wildlife is active all year round. So here I would like to introduce to my uh, CEO and director, Marcel Perkins, an expert in Galapagos Islands, to introduce you our fleet. Hello, everybody. Thank you for attending. Uh, I'm Marcel. I'm going to talk about one of uh, the most beautiful destinations around the planet, uh, the Galapagos Islands, which I have a direct passion for. and. Uh, since the first time I ever visited and it's uh, I love to share this with um, many people and see the idea is to have as many people visit the islands and uh, through Latin Trails we try to help them achieve this uh, for many travelers it's a lifelong dream it's on their bucket list for others and there's others that are really passionate about it and that want to go in depth so there's many choices and to prepare the perfect trip for the for every travel it might be a little bit different because there's people that want um, to stay the full 15 days there's travelers that are traveling with children there's families you have of course the the scientific traveler and you have the person that has it on their bucket list and is visiting all of Latin America on one trip so it's it as uh, Henoveva said just before, the, the main tip is to decide on the itinerary and on the budget. And of course, uh, you have factors as the amount of time you want to spend in the Galapagos. Well, as you can see throughout the pictures, wildlife is the main subject here. Latin Trails in the Galapagos offers uh, several options. We have a uh, first class catamaran, which is the Galapagos Seaman Journey. This is our, our flagship. Um, we're going to go really briefly through the, through the deck plans. Here you have a sun deck at the top. Uh, we have two suites on the main deck. On the upper deck we have six cabins. These are twins and the um, inside social areas are present here. On the lower deck it's the crew quarters. We're going to go through the different areas of the boat. Um, on the sun deck, this is one of my favorite areas on any boat actually. And um, we've adequated it with uh, day beds and the teakwood flooring. It's also a great observation platform as you, because as you navigate the Galapagos, you have seabirds flying above, you have the scenery, the volcanic scenery of the islands that are surrounding you during navigation. On the interiors, we're going to take a small look at the cabins. We have uh, matrimonial beds as well as twin configuration, twin configurated beds. All our cabins have ocean views, so you can actually say that these are a room with a view. Private bathrooms in all cabins with amenities. Our social areas are spacious. We have a nice inside dining area, but we, we have an outside dining area as well, which we'll take a quick look at in a, in a few moments. 
We have our living room. This is where our guide gives uh, a briefing every evening since the Galapagos trip is an educational trip. Uh, that's the focus we have. Our guide every evening gives us a briefing explaining what's um, the, uh, details about the geology of the Galapagos, uh, or perhaps you know um, what's going to happen after Lonesome George if they're going to be able to bring them uh, bring back the subspecies of the Pinta tortoise, um, the behavior of the blue-footed booby, and it's going to give a detailed uh, briefing on what's going to be done as the next day's activities in order for everybody to be ready, have the right uh, shoes for the, the, the next day's excursion, just to give an idea. And this is an area where everybody can share and, um, and, and share the details about their trip. If we look at the itineraries, and this was one of the key points when deciding on a trip to the Galapagos. Well, Latin Trails offers four days, five days, six days, eight days and all the way up to 15-day cruises. We have a 15-day route that we cover throughout all the islands, the, the main islands with visitor sites, we visit each one of them through a 15-day route. Now our travelers decide on which itinerary depending on how much time they have in, to visit the Galapagos. My personal recommendation is less than five days. Although we do offer a four-day itinerary on the Seaman journey, we recommend this type of itinerary for travelers that are more than short on a budget, are short on time. Because they might be visiting uh, four or five countries throughout South America, or they're combining Galapagos with Machu Picchu and the Amazon as well. So it's on their bucket list, and they don't want an in-depth tour, but they want a taste of the islands. They say they were there, and they will get a good taste of wildlife. One thing to note, on all our itineraries, we include visits to see the giant tortoises, which is one of the main attractions of the Galapagos Islands. So our four-day itinerary, it arrives in Baltra Airport. We visit the island of North Seymour. This is a very small island, but it's very beautiful. And one of the most common encounters here and that I really enjoy when I go there is the blue-footed boobies and their mating dance. Then we head off north and we visit Genovesa Island. Here we have El Barranco, which is also known as Prince Philip's Steps in Darwin Bay. What's great about Hanovesa is here you get this, the encounter, the red-footed booby, but also several species of seabirds and which walk around the island in the thousands. We, after Hanovesa, full day there, we would head out down south and we'll visit South Plazas and Santa Fe Islands. Here we'll find tropical birds, we find sea lions, we find land iguanas, and finally, we end our cruise at the Interpretation Center on San Cristobal Island, which is the capital of the Galapagos. Here we get an idea of what the, how the Galapagos were formed, geology and different subjects can be, ex, uh, can be interpreted here. So it, even though it's one of the shorter itineraries, it is quite complete for somebody that is visiting the Galapagos. The Seaman Journey also has a four-night, five-day itinerary where we visit, uh, we start this one, this itinerary starts on San Cristobal Island, and we, well, we arrive to the yacht, we visit uh, Kicker Rock and Islas Lobos, Sea Lion Island. Uh, Kicker Rock is a geological formation, it's one of the uh, mo most picturesque spots in the Galapagos, and on, on the Lobos Island we also find blue-footed boobies, frigate birds, frigate bird is the bird inflate that uh, puts out, um, inflates its red pouch to impress the female. From here we're going to continue our navigation out to um, to uh, the, well we actually visit the Galapagos uh, Tortoise Rearing Center on San Cristobal and then we navigate to Pit Point. This is another spot to, spot to find the red-footed booby and it's one of the isolated areas of the islands that doesn't have that many visitors, it's accessible to smaller yachts and we, we can feel that uh, privacy of being on a small yacht. Next day, on uh, day three, we're visiting Espanola Island, where we have Gardner Bay, one of the nicest beaches around the world. Actually, Travel and Leisure magazine just named it as one of the beaches, a must-visitor a must site for people that like beaches. But of course, you have sea lions, you have the hood mockingbird, and great opportunities for snorkeling. Actually, throughout our whole itineraries, we have good opportunities to snorkel. Then Punta Suarez, one of everybody's favorite visitor sites in 
Galapagos because you have the waved albatros and you have many types of birds. You have the mass boobies, you have the marine iguanas. So this is one of the most entertaining sites for people in search of wildlife. The next day we go on to Floriana Island where we have the Junta Cormorant and Ch Champion Rocks. These are great snorkeling sites and you have, a, you have a really nice green sand beach. In the afternoon we visit the post office bay which is more of a historical site. Finally, we end our cruise with a visit to the Charles Darwin Station and the Twin Craters in the Highlands. We have an interpretation of the Galapagos at the Darwin Station and the craters show us the geological uh, formation of the islands. Then we have, with the Seaman Journey, we have an eight-day itinerary where we go on to the western side of the islands. On the western side of the islands, we have uh, the high, we'll, we start with the highlands of Santa Cruz where we see the tortoises in the wild. Good, a great introduction to a cruise. Then we go on to Isabella, where we visit Tintoreras. Here we find it, it's a channel with white tip reef sharks. It's a, it, it's a, it's a nursery actually where we find the, the baby sharks. We, in the afternoon, we visit uh, the the wetlands, and in the Wall of Tears, another historical site. In its past, Isabella was a penal colony. Now. <laughs> Actually, Galapagos was considered a place not to be about 60 or 70 years ago. Now it's the place to be because of the unique wildlife. We'll continue on our navigation the next day visiting Punta Moreno and Bahia Elizabeth. What's particular about the west side of the islands is the rich marine life in the Bolivar Channel, which we're going to be navigating between Fernandina and Isabela, this whole western side. So it's possible to spot orcas, whale, different types of whales, whale sharks, and at Punta Moreno, Elizabeth Bay, Punta Espinosa, Fernandina Island, Isabel Island, both these, these two days that we spend out in this area will spot flightless cormorants, a bird that lost its ability to fly in order to be able to swim better and because it had no natural predators on land, but it does it have, have them at sea. Here we'll spot penguins, we'll spot large quantities of marine iguanas. This is one of the nicest areas. And Fernandina is one of the youngest islands, so you can see the volcanic formation as well. We'll continue our cruise returning back to the central part of the islands, and we'll be at Santiago Island. This is a, a really nice island where you have Espumilla Beach and Puerto Egas. Here we find the, uh, several species of Galapagos birds, like the Galapagos hawk, the crane. We, have, uh, we find the first seals, which are a bit different from the sea lions, and some really nice areas with uh, lava fields. We'll continue on to Rabida Island on Wednesday. And here we have a red sand beach with sea lions. You have brown pelicans and flamingos. The, the rest of the day is spent at Sombrero Chino, which is Chinese hat, because it takes the name from the form of the hat itself, which is actually, it looks like a, a Chinese hat. Then we'll go on on Thursday to Santiago and Bahia Sullivan. This is one of the largest lava fields in the Galapagos. We'll be able to to uh, explore the geological formations on both Aa -A and Pahoe Hoe lava, which are the different types of lava that are, are present in the Galapagos Islands. We're going to be ending our cruise with a visit to Bartolome, which is one of the iconic sites in the islands, and finally a visit to the island of Seymour before we get back to the airport. So this is our eight-day itinerary, which is a really in-depth itinerary of the Galapagos Islands, but each itinerary has its special highlights and its variety. It's hard to choose one over the other. And of course, then we have uh, another eight-day option, which combines the four- and five-day itineraries. And we can do combinations up to visiting ten, for 10 nights, 11 nights, and 14 nights, 15 days. So all these options, we're going to be able to send them to you by email. I'm going to go actually into the rest of the Latin Trail suite, which the next boat I'm going to show you is the Galapagos Odyssey. This is a great first-class option, one of the most spacious boats. We just renovated it in 2012 in October. It came out of dry dock. We installed a, I'm going to skip the, the deck plans. I'll send these to you by email. Um, here's some photos of the boat itself. The cabins have been renovated. We have uh, matrimonial berths, all cabins as well. One of the characteristics about the Latin Trails fleet is all our cabins have ocean view windows. We'll, we'll get a better picture of that. Uh, here's our twin cabin. You can see that windows can be open and allow fresh air in. That's another unique uh, feature. And cabins are spacious, wooden flooring. You have a sofa bed for children. 
and a small desk area and a mini bar. We have a, an interior cabin that we use for singles. We don't charge a single supplement for this cabin. So we are single traveler friendly. Our social areas include the dining area, which is meals, where meals are served in buffet style. We have an outside social area as well, an outside bar. We have a, um, a lounge area where briefings are given by the guide and people can sit down and relax after their excursions. And we have a really, really nice sun deck with teak wood flooring, day beds, lazy chairs. We have a jacuzzi on board. So it, it, it's a nice first class option in the Galapagos Islands. On board the Odysseys, I'm not going to go into details on each itinerary, but I'm going to give you the different options. We have four nights, five nights, and a second five night option. So we have four, five, five, which can be combined up to 14 nights, 15 days. We've, we talked before about what's on each island a bit. And so these are the options. Depending on the time of the traveler and what they want to see or their budget, they can choose between the different boats or the different itineraries. Now I'm going to show you the Galapagos Grand Odyssey, which is our most luxurious option. And perhaps I, would, I, I truly believe the most luxurious option in all of the Galapagos Islands. Go into details. All cabins have 25 square meters in average. They have a king size bed, a sofa bed for a child. As we mentioned before, there's ocean views and the windows can be open in the cabin to allow fresh air. There's also the twin option in the Grand Odyssey. All cabins have closet space, they have private bathrooms. There is a Grand Odyssey suite which has its own private living room. All cabins, as I mentioned, are equipped with closet space. They have their own mini bar. They have a flat panel TV where you can connect your camera and browse through the pictures you took throughout the excursions. The bathrooms are equipped with amenities from L'Occitane and are very spacious and comfortable. Our social areas are decorated with a modern feel. All areas on board the boat have an ocean view and panoramic windows throughout. A well-equipped bar as well. And good service to go hand in hand. There is a nice a small library and a children's area with Nintendo Wii games and activities. We have a small spa on board and our sun deck which we take a lot of pride in has two jacuzzis, it has day beds and great views. There's a shaded area as well as a, similar to what we have on the, on the Odyssey and on the Seaman Journey as well. The itineraries are identical to the itineraries on the Galapagos Odyssey. We will send these to you by email. With options of uh, four nights, five nights, a second five night option, and we have, um, we have uh, the possibility of combining these all the way up to 14 nights. Finally, we have the Galapagos Voyager. This is a tourist superior option. It's very popular with alumni groups and with the all types of and small families as well. We've added charter to families that don't want to take up on a bigger boat and they've done very well. It's a very comfortable yacht. All the cabins are above the water level, above the water line if you want to call it that way. They have private bathrooms, they have lower berths. It's just a little bit more basic in terms of decoration, but all cabins have windows and can be open to allow fresh air. You have matrimonial and twin configurations as well. We have some nice social areas where the guides give the briefings. This is actually a picture of our guide William giving an explanation to travelers that came from uh, Great Britain. I just I remember this specific departure because we were on board to take the pictures actually. Here's our dining area. It's a spacious area. Food on all four yachts is uh, continental. It's uh, international cuisine. We do present some local delicacies from Ecuador. But the most important thing is the ingredients we have in Ecuador, which are usually natural and organic. Here's the buffet area and the itineraries. The Voyager has an itinerary that's similar to the itinerary on the Seaman Journey. We have four-day four cruises. We have five-day cruises. 
and we have eight day cruises. All of these can combine all, as well to reach up to 15 days. And when we do a 15 day cruise on any of the boats, you don't repeat any of the islands throughout the 15 days. So each itinerary is different. And we'll send uh, the detailed itinerary options to you by email as well. Uh, I'm going to pass you on to my colleague, Javier Echeverria, who's going to talk about the activities in the Galapagos, the interesting part. We went through the technical part on the boats, all the comforts and, and all the perks we can offer you, and the services, like a barbecue on board the boats, we have uh, food for children, we can uh, meet dietary restrictions. Now Javier's going to talk about the fun part. So here's Javier Echeverria. And Hello to everyone. I'm Javier Echeverria. I'm the sales manager from Latin Trails. I, I love to talk about this, this part of the presentation because it's the, I think it's the best part for me to explain about the activities that we can do in the Galapagos. I'm going to talk about the activities. I'm going to talk about the, the weather conditions in Galapagos. I'm going to talk about uh, the, the different animals and where you can find the, the different animals and the specific period of time that we, when you can find those animals in the island. That's, I think that's the... Um, that's the best part of, you know, when you have some requests from people that some people they just, you know, just have their, their specific requests about animals. Sometimes they just want to see whales, they just want to see sharks, they, they, they just want to see penguins and, and you need to know the specific periods of time that you can find those animals. Uh, first of all, I'm going to talk about Galapagos activities that you can do. Actually, in our boats, we have the different activities separately in the different days. The first activity that we can offer is kayaking. It depends on the cruise, it depends on the number of days, it depends where we go because the national park authorities, they don't allow to do some kayaks in different parts, in different islands. So what we have is some permissions to do kayaking in specific islands in Galapagos. So when you want to have, or if you have a request from people who just want to do that, you just need to ask us before where they can do that and if they have uh, an itinerary of four days, five days, eight days, we need to see if they can do one, once at a time or if they can do twice or more than twice. Okay, the other option that we have is snorkeling. That's the best option for if you are in Galapagos. The best thing that you can do is, you know, to do a snorkeling. We have uh, the equipment to do a snorkeling in all of our cruises for all the people who, who are there, so it's, we have enough equipment there, and also it, different sizes. That's uh, really interesting also, we need to always to, to explain to people how to do that, it's not too difficult for the people who have never done, done that before, it's easy to, to, to learn how to do that, and we just always go with the boats and we just, you know, take the persons who are responsible to take care of, of our passengers to do that. Uh, Zodiac and Panga, Panga rides, that, that's how, how we call, in different places it's not allowed to swim, in different places it's not allowed to do kayaking or snorkeling. What we do is we just go with, with, with our Zodiacs or with, uh, with uh, our Pangas, like that's how we call the boats that we have, and we just visit the places around the island when it's allowed. Trekking in Galapagos is also an, one activity that we can do in Galapagos. And in each island, what we try is just, you know, we have a specific, specific roads where we can walk. And we can see the different animals and different attractions, of the main attractions in different places. Shore excursions like, like, like we have in, the, in the, the activities like Marcel described also in the itineraries is already Done, and we already we are going to send you the whole itineraries and everything what we have in the islands. Okay, let me talk about. Okay, that's what we have right now. The, the whole activities. That's what we already explained before. That's um, if you see this picture, you can see the zodiacs or you can see the panga uh, panga ride. That's what we have. We have also included in our tours. And that's how they look like for these are trekking activities, shore excursions that what we have also in each island is possible to visit or to make some shore excursions as well. 
And let me talk, that's the best part of, of the presentation. I love to do, to talk about that. That's the um, calendar of, of nature. And I'm going to talk about different islands, different animals that we can see in the Galapagos Island. Uh, if you have questions, we are open right now. If you want to make some questions right now, we can answer, we can answer you your questions in this moment. There is one person helping us right now with the questions that you have. Because normally you have some requests with different different specifications about animals. When can you see them? I'm going to, to give you an, a main idea of the animals that we can see in Galapagos and where we can see that and when. That's the best question. Because it's better to know. The first thing that I would like to know is to give you an idea. The mess, the, the the best thing is the, about the, the rainy season, the summer season, winter season, like we call it also in Galapagos. The winter, winter or, or rainy season about Galapagos, is in, it begins from October until March. What do we have in Galapagos when it's rainy season? We have a lot of rain, but it's not, okay, we can have like one or two hours rain, and after that we still have sun. What, what is the advantage of, of the rainy season? That everything is green. You know, to visit the, to visit, you know, the main island, the land areas is the best time to visit Galapagos from this time. I'm talking about from October until March, because everything is, is everything is green. You can see the eggs of the of the birds and the eggs of the mammals, animals, of the different iguanas and the different different animals, that's the best part if you want to recommend, you know, the land areas in those months. What happens in the weather? In the weather, that's not the best, that's the best weather. The, um, the, best, the best time to visit the, um, for, you know, for the people who love to, to dive, um, the, the best season to, to, to do that is from June until October. What do we have that? We have the cold current coming from from the south part, from the poles, and what what we have is real cold water, and you can see more animals in those in, the, in this period of time. Uh, the other the other time of the year, I'm, I'm talking about from November until May, what we have is warm water. It's also possible to see a lot of uh, a lot of uh, animals also in the water. You can see also the sharks and also whales and also in different different animals. But it's, it's, not, it's not the best time, this is what we recommend. But it doesn't mean that if you have clients coming in this period of time that they can see animals. No, they will see a lot of, a lot of fishes, a lot of sharks, a lot of kinds of, of species. But it's not the same like, like, like I told you in the, cold, in the cold water that's from June until October. The summer season that begins from April until September, it's more dry in the land part. But it's also nice to, to see, you know, the, the different, the, the evolution of, of, the, of the species when they are growing, you know. That's the best also time to visit how the, you know, how the puppies or how the, the animals, the small animals, they are growing and they are developing in the different islands in the, in the island. Uh, let me talk about the animals. For the people who love, you know, the giant tortoise, what we have is the best uh, the places where you can find those animals. Also in, in the open areas, what we have is in San, Santa Cruz, San Cristobal, and Floriana. In those in those islands, we what we have we have in the high and open in the open areas, uh, and also in the highlands, we we can see those animals. And it is it's really interesting that you can find those animals in the whole year. So if you have requests from people that they just want to go to Galapagos just to visit those specific animals, we recommend those islands, Santa Cruz, San Cristobal, and Floriana. This is all year, so they can they can they can see following different areas. And also in our in our cruises, in all our in our itineraries, we include always giant turtles as well. So you can you can see uh, sure hundred percent is sure that you will see those animals. For the people who love, who love penguins, the places where you can find penguins are Bartolomé, Floriana, Fernandina, and Isabella. And also you can see in the, the whole year. But I must, I must tell you that you must have luck sometimes in some places. It's not, it's not guaranteed that you, you can see them. You must, 
you must really have flags in some places. But in Bartolome and Floriana, this is the most common places where you can see them. Uh, what about the albatross? I, I know that you can see in the, this picture the albatross of their birds on, on the right uh, on the right side of the of the screen. And this are these is big birds. You can only see find those animals in the Spaniola Island. Uh, only that's that this is good to know and this is good that you listen to this, this this period of time that's from May until October. So that means if you have requests in January, in February, in another another months that are not from May until October, you can see those birds. Why? They just go to, to the to the main area, to the mainland, this in Ecuador also. But it's not possible to find any more in Galapagos from this from November, I, I could say end of October until the for the last days of April. So it's better that you know this this specification because sometimes you have people who just want to see those birds and if they are just want, they are planning to come to Galapagos in that period of time they won't see those animals. Okay, let's talk about um, land iguanas. Where we can find them? We can find the land iguanas in Seymour, Bartolomé, Genovesa, Fernandina, whole year. I'm talking about this island first because this it is more usual to find there in colonies, big colonies of land iguanas you can find there. Also you can find uh, land, uh, sea, uh, sea iguanas also in another places, but not the big colonies like I told you before. So the big colonies you can find in Seymour, Bartolomé, Genovese, San Fernandina. Let's talk about the red foot boobies. Uh, like Marcel to already told you, you can only find those birds in the Geno Genovesa, or in San Cristobal, um, also, but in the Punta Pit, that's in the, in the south part. But most common in, in our cruises, what we include is in, in San Cristobal and Genovesa. Only in those places we can find the the red food boobies. If you have requests uh, explaining or asking that they want to see those birds, you need to consider that before you check the itinerary and to see if this is already included, Genovesa or San Cristobal and Punta Pit. Punta Pit. Okay, let's talk about whales. Where we can find whales? Uh, the specific period of time where we, we can see more whales is from June until October. It's more common to see whales in this period of time. That doesn't mean that we can see whales in another period of time of the year, but it's more common to see more whales, more in the north part of the islands, specific, specifically in, 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 the, in the north islands. I'm talking about Wolf, I'm talking about Darwin, I'm talking about Genovesa, I'm talking about Isabella, I'm talking about Fernandina, more in the specific region. Um, let's talk about la, uh, the sea lions. We have two, two species of sea lions. Uh, one is coming from the south Pole and one's coming from California. That's um, also the famous uh, colonies uh, known in the in Galapagos area. Where we can find those animals? The big colonies we can find in San Cristobal, that's the biggest one where we can find a lot of them. Santa Fe, Plazas and Seymour. Seymour. These are the places where the big colonies are. That doesn't mean that we can find those sea lions in the other islands, but specifically, specifically we can see more colonies, the big colonies in these in these islands, and in the whole year as well. Um, let's talk about the birds. What about the people who love to see the birds? Uh, there are a lot of places, but the the specific two islands which are really famous to for the people who love birds is this Genovesa and Española. These are the best places to see birds. We have, like you probably know, we have 29 species of endemic birds in those in the Galapagos Islands, specific in this island. Where, when we can see that the whole year, we have in this place. But if you have requests from people that they just want to see birds, people who love birds, what we recommend is this place, Genovesa and Española. That doesn't mean that it's not possible to see more birds in the other areas. But if they want more from our 29 endemic 
species is more in Genovesa and Española. Um, like already Marcel explained you, we have also the cormorants flightless. We can find them in Fernan Fernandina and Isabella the whole year as well. These are specific and endemic species of Galapagos. Um, what about the Galapagos hawk? Like um, I have, let me show you. There is one great picture on the, of the left side here of this picture. You can see the our Galapagos hawk. And where we can find them? More in Santiago, and also we have seen the, these species also in Española as well. So I can recommend also to have the, uh, to see with them. Santiago. Mm -hmm. Okay. What about the Galapagos owls? <laughs> it's also an, an a specific in, uh, species in the Galapagos. We can find also in Floriana and in Española. That's what we can find. Fortunately, I don't have pictures of that, but you can see here different different pictures of the different species. What about the flamingos, like you saw here on the left side? In flamingos, you can find in Floriana, in Santiago, and in Isabela. So we have different different lakes. It is not guaranteed. One principal thing that you must tell to the people is like, it's not a zoo. Galapagos, most of the people, they just think that this, when you buy a tour, they just they just come here and they think that it's a zoo and it's not a zoo. So sometimes you can see the animals in the next trip. You can see any 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 animals in this lake. Like for example, the flamingos. These are the flamingos you can find in this island in Floriana, Santiago, and Isabella. But sometimes you can find you can find more in Floriana. And the next time when you are visiting the Floriana, they are they are they are gone. They just went to Santiago. So. It is possible to see in Galapagos, but we need to see if it's possible to see them in a specific period of time. But they are there the whole year. What about the dolphins like we saw in the picture here? Let me show you. Wait. Dolphins, like we saw here on the right side, we can see more when we travel in the south part, and especially in the in the eastern area of the Galapagos. That means Floriana, Santiago, and some in some areas also from Isabella when we are traveling to Isabella. Um, what about the the people who just uh, love the lava formations? That's also a good point that we need to explain for other people, because sometimes we have people who just want to see the lava formation beautiful landscapes that we have in Galapagos. We offer in Bartolomé, Santiago, Fernandina, Isabela, where all we are still have volcanoes which are, are active. Right. So it's, it's the best places where we can see we can see two lava lava species what we have in Galapagos. And these are the best places what you where you can find this lava formation. These pictures, like, like like you see right now in the presentations, these are the beautiful species and all the animals that we can find here in the different different periods of time. If you have more questions, if you want to know about more animals that you can see in the Galapagos, or if you want to to know the specifications about the periods of time that you can visit them, you can you can also send an, an emails and you can write us. What about the climate? I already explained you before. Here you have in in this Exercise what you have is the temperature. We can also send you this information by mail, and you can take also take a look what we what we have approximately about the, the temperature. Uh, you know the family travel like, like what we have right now is we can also guarantee you learning experiences, fun experiences, enjoying yourself in unique environment, activities according to interest, safe safety environment. Um, Beba is going to explain you, Maria is going to explain you about your trip to Galapagos, about um, the connections with the flights, and also what we recommend to, do, to, to take to Galapagos, what is possible to bring to Galapagos or is not possible to bring to Galapagos, so I'm going to, to bring her back. Okay, it was a pleasure to talk with you, and I hope that uh, everybody uh, answered your questions and your specifications about the animals, weather conditions, and all the information I already explained to you before. It was a pleasure. Bye. Hello, everyone, again. <laughs>
I'm more uh, excited now hearing uh, Marcel and Javier about everything about the Galapagos. I have learned so much. Um, about your trip to the Galapagos, uh, when you book with Latin Trails, it's so simple because uh, we take care of all the transfers uh, from Quito and to Galapagos. We also arrange the flights. Uh, we take all the reservations. Um, actually, when you book your trip to Galapagos, your airfare is already booked together. So you don't have to worry about any of the details. Our representative at the airport will help you check your tickets and your luggage. The maximum weight per person is 20 kilos. As you can see in this um, chart, with, uh, the airlines that fly to Galapagos are Tame, Aerogal, and LAN. We mainly use Tame and Aerogal. A Quito Valtra flight is 2 hours 50 minutes and Guayaquil Valtra is an hour and 50 minutes. So it's very easy access and thinking that our representative will go all the way um, in Quito, uh, also in the Galapagos, he will greet you with a sign already here, here actually. Here is uh, our guide receiving with a sign of the boat greeting the people, giving them the main instructions before they board the, the if they arrive at the dock of Valtra, before they board the ferry. If they go to Itabaca Channel, eh, they have to cross the channel and then get to the ship. But he will accompany, accompany the guests all, to all these places. As I told you uh, before, Latin trails will only uh, let you go the moment you're ready to go to your own country after you finish a wonderful trip in Ecuador. So we will make sure you arrive well and you live well our country. Thank you for joining this seminar. And I leave you with these uh, beautiful pictures and everything that you can dream, we can make it happen. Live Ecuador is the best opportunity you have with Latin Trails. Thank you. Thank you, Maria and Javier and also Marcel. What a great presentation. I know you took care of a lot of the questions that came in, but we have a few more. So I will go ahead and read those to you, if that's all right. Um, there, are, there are several people that are concerned about snakes. <laughs> Are there, are, do any of the islands have snakes, and is that a concern? Uh, sure. There is one place in, in, San, in Bartolomé and in Santiago. We have seen a specific endemic species of a snake. That is, it is not guaranteed that we can see. I have been there like for seven times. I've never seen one snake, but I have seen the pictures from other people who were there, and they have taken so pictures of these endemic species of the snakes. But it's only, it's only can be possible to see them uh, in Santiago and in Bartolomé. That's the only places where we have seen those snakes. Okay. Very good. And uh, let's, uh, there was a, a question here about uh, the minimum age for children. Do you have a minimum age for children? Okay, what we recommend, you know, in Galapagos, it's difficult to say. It's not, it's not for us, the, like, like we we just uh, have a specific age that, but we recommend for the people. You know, it's better for the, for the parents where they want you know to have fun and to not have, to don't have a stress times with the children. We recommend to have children from six years. So up six years, what uh, that's what we recommend. But if you have like children who just want to to visit the island and they are four years, three years, five years. It's also it's also it's also possible to uh, to visit them, but sometimes they don't want to hike, they it, they don't want to swim a lot, a lot. So it is it is not the best the best place we recommend to take children under six years. That's what we recommend. Of course, we just live we just live on the side of the clients. Okay. And you know, I think I might have stopped and started asking questions before Maria was ready because I see some slides coming up now about other tours. Did you want to say a few words about those? 
about what, excuse me, I couldn't hear you well. Can you repeat oh, again? Oh, she's, she's showing slides now. I think you've got some uh, opportunities for the Andes and and other other areas that you could visit. Did, was there anything that you wanted to mention about that, or should we keep going with questions? Uh, sure, but you are, are you talking about Galapagos, or are you talking about Ecuador in general? I'm just looking at what I'm seeing on the slides right now. Ah, okay. That's uh, you know that's the activities what we can offer in Ecuador in general. We like, like Maria already told you before. We have like that's um, what how the Ecuador tourism minister uh, he sells Ecuador like four like four different worlds, and that's what we call. We have like like you saw in this picture. We have the jungle area, the Amazon area. And we have also, you know, the Sierra, the mountains area, the coast part, and we have the Galapagos. So we have different kinds of activities if you want to visit Ecuador in general, to visit, you know, the culture, to to visit, like, like we saw the Andes, the festivities from the different cultures as well. Here are the different activities that you also can do in our countries, climbing mountains, biking, rafting, trekking. That's what, what we, you see in the pictures right now. We have also beautiful combinations also with some trains, trade roads also what we have, what we offer also in Ecuador, uh, combining, you know, the coast part with the mountains area and also the north part, the south part. So it's, it's, it's a good combination that's what we have. The, the, the cities in the, in, the, in, in, in the coast parts are also really famous here. So that's, uh, that's what we have here in, in, in Ecuador in general. Oh, good. Well, okay. What? Yeah, wonderful. Okay. Well, let me ask you a couple more questions about sure. the, uh, the boat. There were some questions about the yachts. There was a question about whether there are binoculars available on board. Um, unfortunately, we don't have that. What we what we do what we always ask we just ask the people to bring that with them. We don't have on board. Uh, sometimes the uh, the guide has, but it's not guaranteed that he's going to bring the whole time. What we try is always to 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 bring that, but we recommend to bring bring that with you if it's possible. Okay, very good. And uh, another question about the yachts: Are the cabins air conditioned in addition to open windows? Sure, sure. Each cabin has air conditioned, so we also offer that as well. So they All can right. have also the option if they want to do that. Mm -hmm. Okay, very good. Um, there is another another thing I don't know if Brady Marcel explained that before. We have uh, um, on our cruise on the Grand Odyssey, we also have connected suites. That is for the for the families who are making some trips. You know, with the, they want to make some trips with the children together, and they don't want to go outside to go to the to the suites of the children, so we have connected also suites. That's also a good point if they want to to share the, the cabins with them. Oh yes, that's an excellent point. Thank you for bringing that up. I know that that's important to a lot of people, so that's great. Thank you. Right. And um, let's see, a lot of people are interested in uh, brochures and also getting the animal list that you mentioned. and so. Maybe we should just remind people what how they can how, how can agents order brochures. Okay, um, I already have the emails of all the, all the people who are right now connected. So what what I can do is I can send you the whole information of of, of what we already talked before, and if they have a specific uh, team that they want to share or if they want to ask us, they can bribe us. Because we have like different brochures of the of the different cruises, we have you know the specifications, more technical specifications, the itineraries, the prices. So everything what they want, we can send them. But this is a, there is a, there is a big uh, list. <laughs> so it's what we com recommend is I'm going to send you the the whole information, the main information. But it just just one specific information like like I told you before about the animals, weather conditions, and something like that. We can send them as well. So they just need to buy us again. Okay, that's great. Thank you. Here's our All information, right. like you see in the in the, in the screen. So that's the information. So if they want a specific information information, they can send me an email, and I can mm -hmm. I pro I 
I'm sure I will send them the whole information that I need. Yeah, very good. Thank you so much. Well, I think uh, Maria has answered most of the questions that, that came in, and, and any of the others that haven't been answered, we can send along to you. Is there anything else that you, Maria or Marcel, would like to share today before we go? Okay, I think Marcel can can say can say you goodbye, and he's going to explain just a few information about it. Our, our company, Maria, already finished um, the presentation, and I'm already, I'm already finished as well. So it was a pleasure also for, for us to, to meet you here, and I'm, I'm, give you, I'm giving you Marcel right now. Okay, bye. Thanks. Thank you, everyone, for attending. It was a pleasure to share some information about our beautiful Galapagos Islands, a little bit about Ecuador, and, and what Latin Trails does in, gen does in general. As we mentioned, we are specialists in Galapagos cruises. We have uh, four yachts of our own, but we can assist you with other boats as well in the Galapagos, as well as island hopping programs, trips around Ecuador, and trip extensions uh, to Peru, as we have offices as well in uh, Lima and Cusco and in Arequipa there. It, again, it, until the next time, uh, I would like to say thank you. and. Uh, we will have additional webinars going into details of travel around Ecuador, around Peru, and other areas that we cover. Thank you very much again, and it was a, again, it was a pleasure to speak with all of you.